Hello, my name is Evelyn Shi. I'm an assistant professor of Chinese here at CU Boulder, and I'm here to introduce Kylie Blues. So Kylie Blues is the debut work of director Bi Gun, who is still relatively young. Um, and it has become really, really famous and made the director's name globally after its release. Uh, and the interesting thing about it as a Chinese film is that it is all about a remote area of China, right? And in, within that remote area, which is Guizhou, it also uh, evokes an ethnic minority, the Miao people. And, and so um, there's something to be said about the film as a, as a, a regional film that's very interested in the disappearance of certain uh, ways of life, certain uh, areas that have been shunted off and cut off from the, the major action of the, of the nation as just being a remote borderland. Um, and, and hence, uh, not in step with modern China. And I think that the director, who is from this area, who is from um, Kaili, uh, is very interested in capturing those forms of life that are disappearing. And in fact, he seems to feel that it's impossible to capture them already. So what you'll notice is uh, a real attempt to capture the geographic space of this very mountainous, landlocked uh, province in China. Um, that has a lot of rivers and beautiful scenery and not a lot of infrastructure. Uh, but what you'll also see is that the landscape is also a dreamscape. And sometimes it's hard to tell what time it is within the narrative, which seems to loop back upon itself. So anybody that you meet upon this journey that you go on with the protagonist uh, may be real, maybe a dream from years ago who is already um, passed away in real life, maybe a vision of the future. And all of it is set against this moving landscape that is um, shown with a lot of panning movement uh, with a camera, with a lot of um, handheld camera, a kind of drifting, dreamy movement through the hills of Guizhou. One device that the film uses to stitch together all of these dreamy pieces uh, is actually a, uh, the poetry um, that is recited by the main character. Uh, now in the film he is the author of these poems and he is reciting them uh, on television in a local program. But in reality they seem to have been penned by the director Bi Gan himself. Um, and it, it does the job of becoming the sort of soundtrack to the viewer's travel through these remote areas. Um, and it really brings a kind of lyrical presence to the whole entire film. So whenever something slightly surreal happens or counter to um, the movement of the plot happens, uh, we can kind of easily melt back into this lyrical uh, mode and rely upon the poetry to bring us back into the wholeness of the experience. So one very interesting aspect of the film that may not come through, other than the fact that it's uh, mostly in a regional dialect, um, is the fact that a lot of the popular music is actually Taiwanese. Um, and, and you'll also see a link between the pop music in the film and these cassette tapes. After um, economic reform began in 1978, some of the earliest uh, interchanges, cultural interchanges between Taiwan and the PRC came in the form of pop music. And at the time, uh, cassettes started to become more and more the medium of exchange. So people would pass tapes on from, uh, from one to the next, and they would have these ta uh, Taiwanese pop songs that were developed in a capitalist economy, right? So they had a very uh, sweet and, um, and beautiful uh, melody to them. They were supposed to give you the sense of capitalistic desire, right? And it was something that people were not exposed to, especially during the Cultural Revolution. It was very different. Um, and so what you see that is left here in the 2010s in Guizhou, in a remote area of China, is that some tapes that are from, that have music from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s in Taiwan, um, again come to life. So, in the middle of this film, the sort of centerpiece of it, everybody comments on it, is this 30-40 minute long single take. Um, and it's a very drifting, beautiful single take that goes up and down stairs, 
Um, it cuts across parts of this small town. It goes on a boat across uh, a small river. It goes to a concert. Um, and you really travel with a sort of omniscient and yet personal um, point of view through this small town. And all of the pieces of the story, this dreamlike story, get woven together and come crashing against one another. Um, and so when you get to it, you'll know. And it'll be, uh, you'll, you're going to have to strap in for the ride. And with that, uh, I welcome you to watch this film, Kylie Blues.